Hi, I'm Rick Lambert. Welcome to this marketing show. I'm joined by the one and only Cheryl Weedmark, and we're going to be talking about the intersection of sales and marketing, a hot topic right now I'm sure you've been thinking about. And uh, so I'm sure I'll let the folks maybe know who you are. Some of you may know me from sell2win.com. I do a lot of sales coaching with business to business organizations, specializing in many cases with managed service providers who actually provide outsourced services to companies for IT and whatnot. But Cheryl, let them know who you are. I'm Marketing Customer Experience um, Director at Into Communications and this marketing show. We've been talking about doing this like collaboration of when sales and marketing collide and what you get. And that's sort of where the name came from. We were asking a lot of our customers and, and followers what their feedback was. But smarketing, it's sales, marketing, smarketing, literally colliding of the two words. Yeah, a little more sales. But anyway. Um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so we get asked all the time, Cheryl, hey, should I hire you folks at Into Communications to manage my digital marketing? Mm -hmm. Or should I hire someone and bring them in-house? That's really what we want to talk about today. Yeah, that's our topic. Insourcing versus outsourcing. Um, just to mention, I was actually surprised we did a little bit of research on mm -hmm. statistics around like the areas that a lot of companies will in-source versus outsourcing. A lot of them outsource, obviously, accounting and IT. That's kind of an obvious one, but digital marketing is actually in the top three. So if you look at uh, the so-called stats, uh, back in 2012, digital marketing wasn't really on the radar. People were outsourcing yep. it in a minor level, and they were doing things like, uh, well, people were familiar with cutting grass, you outsource that, cafeteria services. But over the last little while, a few years, now mm -hmm. digital marketing, to your point, is ranked top three of outsourced services in 2019 anyway. Which is crazy. And 60% of American companies actually kind of do a bit of a collaboration of both. Mm -hmm. So they'll have some people internally, which we see with mm -hmm. a lot of our clients, but then they'll outsource some of the tactics and some of the deliverables. So I'm going to take the side of insourcing if you want to take the side of outsourcing, and we can kind of have a, a bit of a banter conversation, and we'll... Choose a winner at the end, right, Vinny? A nice Vinny? argument. Uh, okay, so just for the viewers, are we talking about big companies, mid-sized companies? And the reason I ask is because I think larger companies tend to have in-house yep. talent. But I think today we're talking about if your business is maybe uh, anywhere from a million dollars, maybe up to $50 million, and you're questioning, hey, do I have the in-house expertise? Should I outsource? So that's kind of our target audience, uh, I think, for today's conversation. Yeah, we're, we're sort of talking sort of small to medium-sized businesses. Yeah, yeah. Now, that being said, my background is sort of interesting in that I worked for, you know, Canada's number one financial institution. We did have an in-house marketing team, so I have that experience of being part of an in-house team, but we also did outsource a lot of stuff. You did. We did. Yeah. So we sort of had that combination, which is kind of a bit of a trend that we're seeing. Um, but yeah, let's, let's hear your outsourcing uh, you're outsourcing pros okay, and so, cons. So here's the argument we hear all the time is, hey, Rick, uh, should we, you know, hire someone to come in? We'll own the person. They'll understand our culture. Uh, this person's apparently good on social media. Uh, in many cases, they're a millennial. So, hey, they got Snapchat and Instagram down pat. So we feel comfortable giving mm -hmm. them the keys to drive our business messaging. And I say, okay, well, that's great. Uh, have you thought about really the full stack of talent that you need to have? Because it's far more than just pick, posting a cool picture mm -hmm. of, you know, you and your boss at a meeting yes. and, the, and, this, and the thing. Because really, I would argue that marketing is becoming more and more complex for me anyway, the way I see mm -hmm. it. You know, you need video, email, content strategy, analytics, the software to drive the analytics. And so there's so much more than just having someone come in and create brochures or feature sheets like we maybe did years yeah. ago. And I, th yeah. I just think it's tough for small businesses to get that talent. The tools, that's a huge part of it. Also the expertise that an agency can offer. They might have someone that spent 20 years in video and 20 years in the design world. But also on the insourcing side years? of things, potentially. Was, did you leave it around back then? I mean, <laughs> um, on the insourcing side, lineup, just a point. Yeah. on the insourcing side, I would say you know the benefit is that when you're internal, you have a really good grasp of the culture of the organization. Yeah. You can yeah. shift, you can add deliverables in very quickly. So let's say it was a video that you wanted to post for social media, yeah. you could just you know pop upstairs to the fifth floor, shoot a video, and have it posted you know almost instantly. So there's there's a little bit of that and a bit of an understanding of the branding, vision, message, all of that good stuff. So, you know, Cheryl says 20 years. Look, 20 years ago, things changed. And I would argue, you know, we have half our staff are millennials, if not more, because we want that vibe of how we can fully leverage technology. Right. I would argue, though, that in many cases, and I'm not trying to pick on the millennial here, you need that headset to think through the strategy of the video on the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are the, 
how do we tie that into all the different touch points to our target persona? And I think often they're rifle shots as to how do we do things yeah. as opposed to a holistic strategy, blogging, email, social, different channels, you know. So I think this is a complex thing. And we're not, I'm not trying to make it a daunting thing. I'm just saying if you're sitting there saying, hey, what's it going to cost me or what's the ROI mm -hmm. to bring it in-house? Mm -hmm. Look, you're spending minimum, okay, a kid coming out of college. Uh, let's call it 35 grand a year. You hire a tenured person, you're pushing six figures, and can they you know, do a video on the fifth floor, mm -hmm. do pre post production, really brand it up. Um, so, you know, I think the argument around outsourcing it to someone like us or another agency is you're going to get a professional mix of talent that have all the disciplines, the technology, you get a controlled price per month. And really, if you're not happy with the results, you know, you can try something else. But, right. Um, okay, a couple more points on the insourcing side. Um, being able to... Bring... about to wrap up, I think. <laughs> Almost. One more minute. When you're, when you're pivoting in a situation where, let's say, in an agency, you signed, you know, what we call either statement of works or agreements, and you've said, okay, we're going to have this deliverable this month, and we're going to have, you know, 12 social posts, and we're going to have, you know, six blogs, and we're going to have this amount of hours of SEO. It's hard to shift from that mm -hmm. in an agency world. Now, internally... There, it, it's very easy to say, you know what, we're going to do something different mm -hmm. tomorrow. We're going to add this to our stack of, you know, digital presence yep. because you have that capability. I, I think, you know, you as the viewer, you know your business best. Could argue um, either way. Winner over here, ding, 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 I'm ding. I'm just saying that, you know, <laughs> if you put the pluses and minuses beside one another, we're finding a lot of companies are saying, you know what, I'm better at doing this. Mm -hmm. And that's why they'll hire what we would call maybe a, um, a VCMO, a virtual chief marketing officer that has a team that's like fractional ownership type of thing where you know every mm -hmm. day, right, the drink's going to be served to the table, which by the way, our first show, I don't even have anything in my cup here, by the way. That's because you showed up late to the set. That's All what right. happens. <laughs> um, no, it's interesting. And, and I think that you know, the, the nice the nice part of it all is that we're seeing digital marketing in the top three things that are being outsourced for a reason. And it is complicated. It's not as simple as taking a picture and just posting it on social. There's branding, there's strategy, there's all of that good stuff. Uh, speaking of good stuff, next week, uh, something that you're going to talk to that's near and dear to your heart, yeah. of course. <laughs> It's hot as a pistol right now, LinkedIn. <laughs> and you know watching, your reps' profiles are probably a disaster. Your customer-facing profiles are probably a disaster. And we just launched a brand new 90-day LinkedIn boot camp with some big companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a critical part of the sales and marketing mix and hits that intersection between sales and marketing. We're going to talk about what people are doing there to win next week. Yeah, we might talk about the Super Bowl as well. So that's coming up next on week Thursday. <laughs> on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or suggestions on topics, you can email us anytime, engage at intocommunications.com. Am I an okay co-host? You're usually by yourself. You good with all this? You're the best I've had today. Oh, really? Yeah, all good. <laughs> See Thanks you next week. Joining.